Everybody following? I mean, it's like a lot of stuff, so... And it's not going to finish. This is probably the hardest, most like Ooh. engineering. Um, okay, so... And this is Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> I am Thomas. From La Payas. And I founded the Biohackerspace in Paris. And it's called La Payas, which means a bench in English. And I'm not going to talk about my, my lab, uh, my hackerspace. Uh, I'm also actually doing a PhD in synthetic biology and I'm going to talk about that because uh, it's very close to the history of DIY biology uh, as we will see. Um, so there's something going on right now in biology uh, is that actually it's kind of becoming a technology that on which we can rely on. Uh, and you know it's we've been doing biology since millionaires, I mean like thousands of years, but uh, agriculture is the beginning of biotechnology. But at some point uh, in the 70s, we actually started being able to tackle genes and to change them positions to uh, exchange uh, por big portions, and we call that recombinant DNA. Um, and that has been going on, and some, somehow computer science came, came in and enable us to actually understand the complexity of life and, and to describe it you know, with big models uh, and a lot of parameters. And then actually we started actually to push uh, uh, physicists into biology and all, all biology, the, phys the physics world and the computer world came together and say, yeah, uh, you know, let's make a big bet. Uh, is it possible? Uh, is life, you know, uh, can we actually engineer life, you know, if we could just summarize it. Uh, can we engineer life? Can, do we have the ability uh, to, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to gather our knowledge and to use our actual tools in order to build living systems that were engineered for specific purposes? So it's like, you know, uh, based on a simple hypothesis that if I really understand what I'm doing, then I'm able to do something with that. And so it started uh, with, uh, you know, little stuff. Trying actually to just take the science of electronics, where like in computers you have small transistors assembled together, performing logic functions, and, and what you can actually call as a very simple device is what you can call an oscillator something that provides information and oscillate between uh, a value that is one and zero, and then permanently. And in the year 2000, there is a bunch of scientists that came up with a project called the uh, Repressilator, where they basically used genes uh, wired together in a bacteria to produce such oscillation. So it was the first time that they proved that, that by using biological components together uh, that we knew how actually they were working, like being able to repress actually another gene and wire them together, we would actually theoretically get an oscillator. They actually implemented those genes in the bacteria and they got oscillation. And that was the start uh, of a new uh, philosophy in biology, what we call synthetic biology, is trying to uh, design devices, synthetic devices, synthetic biological devices for specific functions. And from that, we, that came up as a concept that life could be perceived as a kit. Uh, because we could take, you know, uh, like we, GFP has been mentioned before. GFP is coming from uh, jellyfish. You know, uh, it's just been taken uh, after it's been sequenced, and just you just take the, the sequence of the protein, and you synthesize it, and you just put it uh, in front of a promoter for ex for expression, and you can put it in any animals or any plant is going to be expressed, and you, the cell in which you put it will flourish. So, you know, the universal language of of life is DNA, and DNA is just transportable to any kind of living system. So that makes it possible, uh, is that if we, if we know the basic blocks of life, the basic information, the basic needs to make a living cell, 
then we are able actually to design ourselves those living systems if we have a sufficient understanding of it. Um, okay. Yeah. So, you know, this is what looks like synthetic biology. I mean, this is not the biology we used to in, in the classrooms. It's not about, about nice drawings and uh, qualitative interactions, this A and B interaction together, it makes a nice function. Actually, this is closer to physics and engineering, where we try to uh, you know, understand, capture the real uh, behavior of the parts we are talking about. And why we need that? It's because uh, if we really want to make biology into an engineering fields where we can do engineer stuff, uh, we, we, it is necessary to make abstraction layer. It's like for a computer. There are a lot of computer engineers out there, uh, but for sure, they don't know exactly how works a transistor. You know, transistors in your chips today, uh, that, the chips that are in the computer, they rely on quantum physics. And for sure, the guy that is designing your chip doesn't know a thing about quantum physics. Uh, and if you want actually to engineer life, uh, to enable this you know, kind of new engineering uh, principle, uh, then you need to, uh, to, to, to create abstraction layer where the parts you're using are already completely characterized. You know, and you don't need to know what's really going on at the basic level of the molecule uh, to design the whole system. So that's why there is extensive characterization, and this is what it looks like for a single gene, for example. Yeah. So. Then I was talking about computers and the importance <coughs> of the computers. So life is complex. It's really complex. I mean, we are <laughs> just tackling, you know, uh, like the single bit uh, of what is real life, and we are very far from understanding the whole thing. Um, but uh, we actually uh, are capable still of capturing simple stuff, uh, simple stuff that are in certain conditions useful. And as I, there have been presentations previously, and um, this is uh, a computer game called Foldit. Maybe some of you have heard it. It's a computer game to create proteins. Uh, so it's, it's it's giving you tools that make you in the in in the thick of uh, synthetic biologies, where you ask actually to design proteins for specific functions, and. And actually, uh, the best players of those games uh, should contribute to science since they help researchers to find optimal solutions to problems that even the best computers couldn't do. And so now, actually, uh, I'm using this example as a way to show you that because we can we use computers to understand the complexity of life, it means that you can start actually doing uh, complex stuff. Uh, with basic understanding. And can I have the next one? Yeah. And recently, uh, there have been actually uh, uh, um, an initiative from the MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that, that said, OK, uh, we want actually to teach students how to do synthetic biology. And we just want to, you know, like, like a classroom where you show actually how things work theoretically and, uh, and you have practicals, uh, practice, practices. Let's actually ask people to really design projects from the beginning to the end. It's like from uh, what you really want to achieve at the end to the real implementation in the lab. And this has been called International Genetically Engineered Machine Competition. It's been going on for almost seven years, and, and it's worldwide. This is in 2010, but last year, in 2012, there were like almost 200 teams all over the world participating. And, and they are just doing amazing projects. Uh, can, can, can I have the next slide? So, <coughs> I have here very few examples. But basically, a team uh, in, uh, in 2006 from Edinburgh, uh, it's a very, uh, very speaking, self-speaking example. They, they, they looked at, you know, few uh, very important problems, uh, you know, in the world uh, that could be maybe answered by, uh, by synthetic biology. And one of them is actually being able to sense uh, chemicals that are dangerous for the health. And, and there is a problem right now in, Bang in Bangladesh where there is a lot of pollution uh, with arsenic. And so they actually designed a bacteria, a, a genetical system that implemented 
in bacteria in order to sense this arsenic. Uh, why is it did that? Because actually, if you actually can make a bacteria that can sense arsenic, since bacteria can reproduce themselves, you know, uh, exponentially, it means that you actually biosensors become extremely cheap. You can it can be distributed everywhere, and co compared to the actual solutions today, which are completely chemical, it needs. Uh, a specific engineer that goes to remote place, makes some testing that costs thousands of euros. It, it's, it's not scalable. But then, if you use bacteria in, in a simple manner, where you just need actually to put some bacteria in water and, and wait for some kind of response, which could be fluorescence or change of color, that's that's easy. I mean, it's like IKEA. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then another example. So there are a few examples of people actually uh, trying to uh, improve food. So, for example, you have a bio beer where they wanted actually to express molecules that are good for health uh, in beers, so that when you get drunk, you actually actually get improving your health. Uh, uh, there, there, here, here, the project. Um, uh, it's uh, it's they want to use bacteria to process to process food and remove starch uh, and you know a lot uh, that I don't know I don't know the name in English of this thickness but a lot of people actually cannot eat starch and and because they are just allergic and uh, it's like gluten intolerance yeah, yeah. 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 celiac disease exactly so <laughs> and there are a lot uh, I mean it's and uh, so it's an economical problem. Uh, it's uh, also a living problem for all those people uh, that are touched by this disease. And so if we could simply actually use uh, like fermentation with bacteria to just remove you know, that stuff, that would make the life much more easier for those people. Uh, can I have the next slide? Yeah, and like even more funnier stuff. Uh, yeah, as been mentioned, you can actually make cells glow, you know? And so those, those guys uh, here actually engineered uh, bacteria in order to express a lot, a really a lot of proteins that naturally, uh, not for us, but actually produce light. It, it, it's, it produces light naturally, so it means that at some, at some point you can imagine even uh, having organisms that uh, in the streets or in your garden will enable a path to be light, you know, and it would be all organic. And, and this, this, like in, in this corner, uh, you can recognize the hello world, the computer world. But uh, actually, those, this photography of, uh, of a text it could be actually a photo, a photo of a face or, or any, any kind of picture, uh, has been imprinted on bacteria. Uh, so bacteria has been engineered so that when light touches them, they release a pigment. But when they are not touched, they don't do anything. So it's just like a negative, you know, and, and it works exactly the same, and it does a lot of precision. But it's a living picture, you know, because then uh, bacteria grows and the picture gets deformed at all. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, L last slide. So um, I, want, I, I just wanted to give you like a, a sense of what could be the future. It may be not like that, but it could be. Uh, we are actually getting uh, very much advanced in the science of gene synthesis and gene sequencing. So it means that tomorrow we could actually synthesize our entire genome for a few pennies. And so, and as I show you, there are so many fun stuff and actually important stuff and useful stuff that you could do using synthetic biology. That uh, if it comes to your lab or to any biological space, you could actually use the service. Like, you know, not app stuff because you, want, you have an, uh, an Apple iPhone and you just want to play a game or, or I don't know, or Android, you know, uh, system. Uh, you could just have a system to express gene in bacteria and you want it to make it useful or to express the drug or, or I don't know, anything important for you. Then, you know, you could just actually maybe contact the gene store, you know, and just, just actually print that gene on your, on your desktop and start actually engineering. And, and, and make it useful. I mean, it's why not? I mean, uh, all the tools are there. Uh, it's coming. So, I mean, why not? So, it's a bit provocative, but uh, I'd like you to think about that, and maybe we can talk about it during the question session. Thank you.